Hello there, and welcome to Ancient Theories Channel. Okay, in my last video I focused on cutting quartz geode and breaking it with heat treatment. What I didn't say is how the ancient Egyptians uh, cut through granite or dolerite. Wait, not only cut and polish, but achieve microscopic precision cut through quartz microcrystals in those stones and get the astonishing effect. There are a lot of theories, but to accomplish that, they must have some diamond tools or tungsten carbide, maybe corundum pools or who knows, maybe lasers. Well, after this video, all the magic will be gone, so brace yourself. And no, it was not cut with lasers. I made even a point stating that even if so, then they needed other mentioned tools to hide ablation marks of the laser cuts, which would be strange and, to be honest, not so bright of them. But first things first. When I am talking about the fine finish of hard stone artifacts, I mean those dolerite vases, granite boxes, sarpeum, with precision measured in microns. Those artifacts have clearly micro quartz crystals which were cut through when other granite on dolerite logs and so on with more rough surface don't have this feature. So those artifacts are the ones with clearly cut through microcrystal quartz crystals and to achieve that you need hard tools harder than any quartz so in mush scale you need something above seven points yeah what you also should know is that I truly believe that the knowledge of this masonry was lost in time and rediscovered later in more modern times. Not modern, more modern. But no, it wasn't that quantum laser or high power plasma stuff. At certain point in the Bronze Age, there was quite an odd event. Commonly known as the Bronze Age Collapse, the time when the sea people attacked around 1200 BCE. Uh, there probably were more catastrophic events in our history, but let's talk about the Bronze Age before mentioned events, so before 1200 BCE. Guess what metals people commonly used in the Bronze Age? Yes, bronze. And you cannot work in granite with bronze tools, right? Well, technically, Egyptologists presented a technique of cutting with a bronze saw and quartz dust and water, which is somehow working, but the progress is minimal and not precise enough. You cannot cut a quartz crystal with another quartz crystal. You are going only to break one of them, not cut through. Others suggested cutting granite with heat treatment, which is also not the best way, but it helps. However, we can trace the heat treatment in stones and crystals. And yes, the heat treatment was used to some degree, but still you wouldn't get only you would get only rough surfaces with that. My theory is that at some point Egyptians and other ancient masons used emery rocks which means corundum. But they didn't have corundum tools. No, it was even simpler. They used bronze tools with corundum paste. I am not talking about this paste for teeth, but paste with corundum for cutting. Maybe even mixed with quartz. The corundum crystals were shattered using heat treatment or so on, just like the quartz crystals in my last video, and this powder, crystal powder, was mixed with other ingredients to form a paste or concoction which would be used just like our grinding pastes today. Sometimes for grinding, sometimes for cutting, sometimes for drilling, depending on the grains of corundum in the paste. 
Okay, now you think I just made things up, but hear me out. If they used that, then there should be marks or evidence of this method, and if we didn't hear about it, then but wait. Technically, we have found evidence. Listen. There is an academic paper by Anna Serota and Federico Caro, sorry for uh, this, I, I don't really know these people from my life. Uh, the paper is from 2015, so it's not so recent, it has 10 years already, in which they talk about their findings. They found a piece of broken limestone, yes, limestone, uh, dated around 1350 BC from Egypt. So, roughly 100 years before this collapse I'm talking about. Uh, and it is not the most important, but uh, this fragment of limestone, uh, it is from the Amarana period, Dynasty 18. Uh, so, there is clearly a drill hole in this piece. According to the authors, more than one drill hole, but the main drill hole is about one centimeter wide. And what uh, do we have at the bottom of this tubular hole? Some strange powder. And after scanning with electron microscopy and energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, they concluded the material is a mixture of predominant angular grains of corundum with jagged edges and a few others, minerals such as quartz, uh, rutile, feldspar, apatite, uh, ilmenite, aguite, biotite, homite, usually smaller in size, but mostly corundum. Several particles of corroded bronze and green copper corrosion products are intimately dispersed among the above mentioned particles, imparting a light green color. But the main thing is, at the bottom of this drill hole, we have corundum powder with, actually, the grains of this corundum are in the same size with addition of smaller grain-sized other compounds. Uh, not compounds, other minerals. I'm talking compounds because I truly believe that it was a paste, but we have only a powder today because only, only the minerals um, are visible today. After the long time, other substance, substance uh, will perish in time and we have this corundum with limestone quartz and other chromites. But I think it's mainly, mainly Corundum and quartz and others are just impurities. Someone mm, creating this paste or concoction would use corundum, but mm, to gain clear corundum, sometimes there will be some other mm, minerals in this corundum rock, because corundum crystals forms inside rocks, and those rocks are made mm, with quartz or feldspar, apatite, anything others. And where we can find those corundum crystals? We can find them in Greece, in Greece island of Naxos. And we know there is mm, corundum mines there and emery rock mines there. And we have also corundum mines in uh, Ethiopia and uh, other parts of Africa. I will leave a link to this article in the description below. My theory is that in the Bronze Age, Egypt imported emery rocks and produced corundum grinding paste using heat treatment of corundum crystals. Sometimes bigger, clear corundum crystals were used in jewelry, as rubies and sapphires, but in the essence, the crystal powder was used as the main ingredient in the grinding pastes. And that paste probably was insanely expensive. The recipe for this paste would be guarded and the storage of it would be in some kind of a vault. However, uh, after the Bronze Age collapse, the trade routes with Greece, Islands, Naxos, and other, and today's Tanzania and Ethiopia perished. Uh, 
And with that, people stopped delivering us insanely precise artifacts in grind or dolerite. I know there is more to talk about, but think for yourselves. I may not have all the answers for you, but using this technique people can work with hard stones like granite and deliver us insanely polished artifacts. Nevertheless, the cost of work hours spent on that is still high, but not unimaginable. Okay, before you uh, critique my theory here, I know, I know, there is a lot of work going on, there is a lot of years of work with this method to clear some Sarapium boxes and create some uh, crazy angles and I'm, I know, I know there is this scoop marks on Aswan obelisk uh, which could be done with this grinding metal and dolerite stones pounding with, not pounding, grinding with them and this corundum paste but I am talking, this is the way they used to do this in last period of the Bronze Age, I'm talking about 1500, 400 DC, and this is how they polished stuff, how they managed to drill those holes. I'm not talking that they were doing this on industrial scale level. This is example how they could achieve this with a lot of work, with a lot of passion, with a lot of greed or a lot of fear, because if they feared that someone will punish workers if they don't deliver the same quality as in uh, those Sarpion boxes, then they used to work 12 hours a day grinding or pounding or polishing stones. And they used this corundum powder, they used this corundum paste. That's what I'm saying, okay? I don't know everything, I don't know how they moved those big Serapion boxes, I don't know how they managed to cut those blocks from Aswan, how they transported them, I'm just talking about this method of cutting with corundum paste and bronze tools. It's possible you will get a little progress, better progress than with quartz sand, and they knew about this, and we have evidence now that they knew this. And you should also knew this, that ancient Egyptians knew about corundum and they produced some pastes or concoctions or powders and they used them with sewing or drilling tools made with bronze and it works fine. Not best, it was not the best tool, but they used what they had at the time and how they made the same level of polishing back then in 3,000 years ago and 5,000 years ago was the, the, the same method used uh, in this span of 2,000 years later or ago before, uh, before uh, our recorded history. I don't know. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. Till we meet again.